Okay, Algebra 2, here we go. Gonna make this a little shorter and sweeter tonight. Um, I'm actually doing these a little bit earlier. Um, I've got the opportunity to help somebody out tomorrow morning. So I'm gonna do this tonight. And um, we're gonna go ahead and get this done. Okay, so here we go. We've had um, one question on number 46. Hopefully you enjoyed the guest speaker the other day. Um, if you haven't figured it out, what she does is she, um, is she writes on a piece of glass in front of her with her right hand, and of course it's visible to her, and then what, um, it, you know, if you're to the camera, it would look backwards, and then she flips the video, and then, um, and then posts it. Okay. So 46, had somebody had a question on 46. I know yesterday there was a lot of information, um, really fairly quickly. Um, it's because I, I skipped a section and kind of moved around a little bit. To solve something like this, this minus means we're gonna to have to use a property of logarithms that says we can rewrite that as a fraction, where that equals one. And now, how can we remember that? Well, we've got two exponents, okay? Remember, a log is an exponent. We have a positive exponent and a negative exponent. Where do positive exponents go? On the top. And something with a negative exponent would end up on the bottom. So that's step one. So then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and say, okay, i got to shift gears. I've got to peel this log off to um, get rid of um, this log and access the, uh, the b. So I'm going to go 2 raised to the first is equal to 15b minus 15 over negative b squared plus 1. So I have, um, cross multiply, 15b minus 15, negative b squared plus 1. And then we see the dreaded quadratic. We've got to go ahead and get it set equal to 0. b minus 1. So b equals 1 or b equals negative 16. Now remember, we got to check for extraneous roots. Let's go way back to the beginning. If I check 1, okay, if I check 1, I have negative 1 plus 1 gives me 0. Can't be 0. It's got to be positive, okay? So 1 is bogus. So if I try negative 16, if I plug in negative 16 right here, you can see I'm going to get a negative. So that is bogus. That equation has no solution. Okay. So, we've got a couple things we're going to take a look at. Um, one of them is the common log. The common log is just like this. Log, I've already talked about this a little bit, log of 100. Okay? Notice there's no base. And when there's no base, what is my base? It is 10. Remember, 10 little fingers, 10 little fingers. So that's why we have 10 base 10. So that would equal 2. So anytime you don't have a base, remember it's called a common log and it's base 10. Okay? That's what your calculator does when you just hit the log button. Okay? So if I go um, log of 100, it assumes my base is 10 and it says I'm going to have to raise to the second exponent. Okay? Likewise, if I go log of 0.001, um, well, it's going to give me negative 3 because I'd have to divide by 10 three times to get that. So, um, so that's a common log. Okay. Today I want to go to probably what is the most important skill. We did all this to get to the most important skill. Change a base and then do some applications. If I want to know log base 7 of 55, what is that? Well, I think we know that um, log base 7 of 7 is 1, log base 7 of 49 is 2, 
And then this one, since it's a little bit bigger than 49, it's going to be a little bit bigger. I'm saying maybe 2.1. I don't know. Okay. Because what we're looking for is the exponent. 7 raised to the 2.1 power gives me 55. 7 to the 2.1 power gives me 55. Okay. So, um, so what, first of all, how can we find this? Well, there's this property that says I can take the log of the top, log of 55, and divide it by the log of my base, and that'll give me my answer. Okay, it's what's called the change of base formula. I'll show you the formula here. It says the log base B of A equals, well, we can change it to some base C of A log base C of B. Okay, so, um, so what we're going to do here is we change it to the base 10. So now let's go ahead and take my calculator. I'm going to take log of 55 divided by log 7. I mean, it doesn't get much easier than that. Log 55, got an end parenthesis divided by log of 7. And I get 2.06. So that was pretty close to my 2.1. 2.06. So if we take a look at that, that means 7 to the 2.06 gives me 55. 7 raised to the 2.0, whoa, 0 0.06 gives me about 55. Okay, so that comes from my rounding a little bit. Okay, so that's the thing that we're going to use a lot today. Let me just do another example. If I had the log base 04 of 20. Again, let's figure out what that is about. 4 to the first is 4. 4 to the second equals 16. 4 to the third equals 64. So it's going to be somewhere between 2 and 3. Remember, I'm looking for the exponent that gives me 20. The exponent that's going to give me 20 is going to be a little bit bigger than 2. So it would just be the log of 20 over the log of 4. Log of 20 divided by log of 4. Divided by log of 4, and I'm going to get 2.16. Okay, so that gives me 2.16. For what it's worth, there's another log button here. Let's go ahead and zoom on out. We're not going to have time to go over this. Um, I could spend time on it next week, but I'm going to work on something else. But there is this button down here that is LN, that means natural log. My base is E, which is an irrational number, 2.7182. But I can also do log of natural log of 20 divided by natural log of 4. And I'm going to get the same answer. It doesn't matter whether I use a base 10 or a base what's called E. Okay? So, so anyway. Let's go down here and do some examples, and then we'll come into a couple application problems. We've got two application problems. Okay. So, so if I've got this right here, if I want to know what x is, well, let's rewrite it. We're going to shift gears. My base is 6, my result is 40, and my exponent is x. So then we'll just go ahead and use the law uh, change of base formula. Okay, log of 40 divided by log of 6. Okay, log of 40 divided by log of 6. Well, I'll just do that with my calculator. 2.06. There we go. So that tells me 6 to the 2.06 gives me 40. Let's go over to this one. Again, my exponent is, is up top. I've got to find a way to tease that exponent out. So let's go ahead and turn off my hotspot here because I don't need it. Um, okay, so I got to rewrite it. Log base 2.1 of 8.25 equals a plus 2. My base is 2.1, my result is 8.25, and my exponent is a plus 2. So I'm just use our change of base formula, log of 8.25 divided by log of 2.1 gives me 2.844. Now I'll subtract 2. 
I get 0.844. Okay, and right now, and rightfully so, you're probably going, wait a minute. Um, what is um, what is this useful for? Well, let's ground this in a couple things. So let's ground in investing, like we just got done with not too long ago. Okay. Say I'm going to invest ten thousand dollars at eight percent APR compounded annually. We're not going to mess with monthly or weekly or anything like that. How long until it gets up to $100,000? Okay. Well, my formula is... Okay. And if you think about this, we have my amount that I'm looking for. We have my initial investment. And I've got my investment rate. And I just want to know how much time. I'm solving for the exponent. So then, ta-da! Solving for the exponent, I'm going to need to use logs. Logs are designed, created, so we can find exponents. Okay. Um, so let's divide. Let's get this by itself. First of all, we got to divide by ten thousand. This just gives me ten. And the significance of this 10 is our result is 10 times bigger. That's all it means, is how long do I have to invest 8% to get a result that's 10 times bigger? Well, we have to rewrite it. My base is 1.08. My result is 10, and my exponent is t. Okay? So here we go. Let's rewrite it. Or, I'm sorry. Now let's do change of base. Let's go log of 10 divided by log of 1.08, 29.9, t is approximately 29.9 years. Okay, so let's think about that. 8%, the reason why I picked that is that's kind of the percent rate that, that over time, long period of time, the stock market has returned. And so if you take $10,000, set it aside and forget you never had it, in about 30 years, you're going to have about $100,000 if history continues to repeat itself. Investing, not a bad thing. Not a bad thing. Okay. Um, let's do something a little bit more scientific. So let's say I've got a number of cases. Maybe this is COVID-19. Maybe it's um, flu. Maybe it's, you know, whatever. Okay. Start with 542, and in three days, I end up with 8 856. Now this one is actually somewhat logarithmic, somewhat not logarithmic. This first part here, let's think about it. My amount is amount zero times um, one plus r raised to the t. That's my formula. What do I have? I've got my initial amount. I don't know my rate, but I know that in three days I'm going to end up with 856. Let's solve. Divide by 542. Divide by 542. So let's go ahead and we're going to have 856 divided by 542. Okay? 1.579. Now you might think this is a log problem, but it's not because I know my exponent. So here, to get rid of that, I just cube root the right side, cube root the left side. And then I'm going to end up with that raised to the 3 to the negative 1 power, 1.165. So that is my 1 plus r. Okay. And I'm even just going to leave that right here because when will it reach 2,000, I'm going to use this 1.165. So we can see that it's growing 16% per day. Okay. When will it reach 2,000? Well, let's think about it. So let's, we're going to start at 856. I'm going to go 1.165, which is the growth rate we just found. How long until it reaches 2,000? Okay. So let's divide by 856. 1.165 is equal to, or to the T. Let's divide that 
2, 1, 2, 3, divided by 8, 56, gives me 2.34. 2.34. Okay, so now remember, we want to find an exponent, so we're going to have to shift gears. I'm going to have to go log. My base is my base. My result goes right here. And that's equal to my exponent. Then once you use our change of base, take log of 2.34 divided by log of 1.165. So I'm going to go log of that answer. And then I'm going to divide that by log of 1.165. That tells me it's going to take 5.56 more days. to go from 856 up to 2000. Okay, So now you can see how the scientific um, uses of this is really, really um, vast, really fast. Okay, So we've got um, solving for exponents and that, that's a huge growth, huge growth for us. Okay. So if you didn't have time to, to submit your questions from the last assignment, since I'm doing this on Thursday about 7 o'clock, by all means, continue to put them in, the, in that last discussion, and, um, and I'll gladly answer them on, on, um, on let's, go, let's go Monday, okay? So let's, I'll give you grace on this. Let's go do Sunday night. And we're going to have a video Monday. And I'll tell you, Monday the video might be a little late. Because um, I've got to move my setup back into school. Um, so next video will be Monday. Okay. Okay. So, good luck. Solve away.